Hello, everyone. I'm Terry Moran. We're coming on the air with some breaking news out of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has issued an opinion on that major abortion case out of Texas. The justices, by a conservative majority, have decided to allow that law in Texas, which effectively bans nearly all abortions in that state, to remain in force. But the court has allowed a narrow legal challenge to the law by doctors and abortion providers to continue. So the abortion clinic's legal challenge to the Texas abortion law can go forward in lower courts, but the effective abortion ban that it works in Texas can stay in place in the meantime. The law known as SB8 bans physicians from providing abortions once they detect a so-called fetal heartbeat, which can be seen on ultrasound as early as six weeks into a pregnancy, before most women even know they're pregnant. Under that law, it's private citizens, and this is the, the very clever way this law was developed. Private citizens, not government officials, private citizens, including those who live outside of Texas, can sue a person they, quote, reasonably believe provided an illegal abortion or assisted someone in getting it in that state up to four years after the act. It brought abortions to a halt in Texas. The court uh, lets that law stand, as I say, but allows a narrower legal challenge to go forward. So let's break this down, bring in senior Washington reporter Devin Dwyer and ABC News senior Court, uh, Supreme Court contributor Kate Shaw for more on this. And, and Kate, first let, let me just go uh, to you on the law. First, did I describe it correctly? And what is its practical impact? You did describe it correctly, Terry. And in terms of the law, the, the practical impact of the, of the law on the ground is exactly as you said. It has ground to a halt the provision of most abortion care in Texas um, after you know six weeks of a person uh, of a pregnancy. Um, in terms of what the ruling that that we got today means, um, so let's take a step back. So the law was challenged both by abortion providers who have basically been unable to perform basic abortion care services since the law went into effect, and by the federal government. So the Justice Department both brought suits challenging the constitutionality of this new prohibition that is flatly inconsistent with Roe versus Wade, which guarantees a constitutional right to abortion um, subject to regulation and limitation. Um, so what the court did today was it threw out the federal government suit, basically saying the writ had been improvidently granted. Sounds technical. It just means the court decided not to decide the federal government's lawsuit, didn't tell us why. Um, but the court did narrowly side with the clinics um, who had challenged this law, basically finding that their law lawsuit against some defendants, not all of the defendants they had sued, but some of the defendants could proceed. You know, this, as you suggested, because this law is enforced by private parties, uh, it's sort of uncharted territory how you go about challenging a law like this. So these clinics named a bunch of Texas officials as the defendants um, it, who would uh, essentially allow them to get their constitutional claims into federal court. And the decision today found that the clinics could proceed against some, but not all of the Texas defendants who had been named in the lawsuit. And, and those defendants, Kate, thank you. Licensing officials. So the problem with this law is that is that the general procedure when your civil rights are being violated by a state law is you say sue the governor, you sue the people who are enforcing that law. But this law is enforced by private citizens. That was what was clever, devious in the eyes of some. That's what makes it so hard for judges. Who did they enjoin? Who do they say you must stop? Every single person who might someday sue? Uh, under this law. And Devin, what they did was they found that there are licensing officials, medical licensing officials in Texas who are included in this law. And they said those people can be sued. And this court, almost unanimous on that question, eight to one. But uh, how did this break down? What do you read in here? Yeah, I mean, Terry, this was fundamentally a, a case about the very question you just you just raised. Who should a court enjoin? Who has standing to bring a case against this law? This wasn't so much about abortion. That was really the sideshow. Um, and what the, uh, the providers argued in this case was that uh, federal courts can target state uh, judges. They can tar target state court clerks, that they can basically shut down the lawsuit process, order that shut down uh, to defend a constitutional right in the state of Texas. And the court here, um, despite showing some potential interest in those arguments during, during the hearing in November, uh, rejected them outright here. They, they said pretty clearly, the conservative majority did, that you cannot, uh, a federal court cannot shut down uh, state court operations, cannot order a judge or a clerk in a state uh, to refuse an SB8 lawsuit. 
Uh, and that's significant because that would be uh, the easiest way, according to providers, to get the right uh, to abortion back in force in Texas and to really shut down this process that Justice Chief Justice John Roberts says in uh, his opinion here, Terry, the purpose and actual effect of SB 8 has been to nullify this court's rulings. Strong words from the Chief Justice. Uh, and he, of course, voted with uh, his conservative colleagues uh, to allow some narrow challenges to go forward. So this, this case will continue. Uh, but as you pointed out, the practical impact is that SB 8 remains in effect uh, now nearing four months in the state of Texas. Uh, it, it is a remarkable situation that the constitutional rights to women in Texas have been effectively nullified by this law, and the Supreme Court has said it can continue. So, Kate, there is this narrow path now against those licensing officials that the court, by 8 to 1, says uh, the abortion providers and doctors may pursue a lawsuit against. What happens next, then? You know, Terry, I don't know that anybody is exactly sure what sort of how this is going to proceed now. I mean, one thing we do know, the case will go back down to the federal district court in Texas, and the federal district court is going to have to decide just what to make of the Supreme Court opinion, basically, you know, permitting this lawsuit to go forward against these state licensing officials. You know, so that part of it's clear. They can proceed with their claim. What's less clear is what kind of injunction this federal court can craft that is responsive to um, the Supreme Court's instructions. Basically, you can enjoin, says the Supreme Court, only these state licensing officials, but they have a somewhat ancillary role in the actual scheme that Texas designed in SB 8. So I think the question is, how broad an injunction could a district court issue against just these licensing officials? Could it put abortion care back into force in Texas based on this opinion? I think it could, um, but I also think it could find it had to narrow uh, its opinion significantly. So I think to be seen at the district court level. Right, and that, that depends on how the district court approaches this. So stay tuned. The legal battle over this law continues as the court takes up uh, that law in Mississippi, which uh, Mississippi State of Mississippi has asked the court to overrule Roe versus Wade altogether. There's much more uh, legal battle to go on on this hot-button issue of abortion in America. Devin Dwyer, Kate Shaw, thanks very much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.